This is the Wealthy Wednesday Show with your host, Lucy McMonagle, a money manifester, coach, and public speaker who's on a mission to helping you create more wealth in your life and business. This show will inspire and empower you with various topics and has expert guests. Let's welcome your host, Lucy McMonagle. Welcome to the Wealthy Wednesday Show. This is your host, Lucy McMonagle, and today I have an incredible guest for you. Her name is Angela Artemis, and she is a speaker, the best-selling author of Intuitive, Intuition Principle, founder of the award-winning website PoweredByIntuition.com, a sales and client attraction strategist, and a money mindset healer. Angela worked in finance for 25 years, has a background in financial planning, mortgage lending, and was a regional manager in private banking, wealth, and investment management divisions, managing, coaching, and training teams of financial sales professionals. She now works with heart-centered entrepreneurs who dislike selling. And if you're in my team, I know you probably dislike even the word selling. <laughs> so she also helps you to empower you to get more clients, to grow your income, feel self-assured, and in the sales process, to start having more fun as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. so that you can have less worry, more clients, and more money. She also reviews the true reasonings on why you feel so uncomfortable in selling your products and services and how this undermines your earning potential no matter how hard you try and what you can do to finally turn this around. Welcome to the show, Angela. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's such a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. Thank you. I, I am so excited. Uh, we met in person, and from the very first day that I met you, I knew there was something very special about you. And I'm so grateful you are on the Wealthy Wednesday show because... You really, truly help individuals overcome that salesy but not feeling sleazy mm -hmm. kind of attitudes. And you also help women entrepreneurs to funnel their intuition into their life, into their business, so that they can have more fun, they can have more clients, and they can have less stress. Exactly. And I just want to say, I too, I was so drawn to you. And then when we started talking after we met and we found out we had uh, so much overlap in um, not only our businesses, but our core beliefs and our values, I just was immediately smitten and I said, I have to get to know Lucy, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. So Angela, can you, can you tell us a little bit on what made you decide to start Powered by Intuition? Sure, I'd love to. It's one of those sort of um, funny stories, coincidence stories. I had been uh, working in finance, as you mentioned, for many, many years. And um, the thing was, although I was always an award-winning salesperson and then a sales manager, I never truly was in love with what I was selling. I enjoyed the process of meeting people. I enjoyed the process of helping people. And that, to me, felt so natural. But um, not that I had anything against financial products or services. I just, it didn't satisfy my soul. And so I, I started to realize that I had gone into it without thinking. You know, when you get out of school and you get recruited and you end up maybe in a management training program somewhere, and it all sounds so exciting, especially, you know, I live right outside of Manhattan and the city and, you know, all that stuff, and um, I didn't think about it. I just said, okay, this is going to be my life, this is going to be my job. And as you progress and you get more and more entrenched 
you know, you start to fall out of love with what was so romantic and exciting and, you know, glamorous. And um, so I started to think about my life at a certain point, especially as the real estate bubble was starting to burst mm -hmm. and right before 2008. And I heard a little voice and it kept saying, you know, you better have a plan B in your pocket because they're talking about the real estate bubble bursting. And at that point, I had moved out of uh, private banking investments and wealth management into mortgage banking. Okay. And I was on 100% commission. So I started looking into being online because I started to think that, you know, what finally occurred to me is I had not been following my intuition in my own life. I had been following everything that everybody told me I should do. So I had gotten into a career that everybody said, oh, yes, you should be in finance. Of course, like everybody what, that was graduating at the time I was graduating in the 80s, it was like get into finance, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so I did that without thinking. I then ended up um, marrying someone who was also in finance. And I didn't think about it. We just we had a lot of overlapping things in our lives, but we really were two different people. I had a much deeper spiritual side that um, was not something that he uh, was interested in. And so I married the wrong person. And then I had a succession of um, wrong investments in the real estate market. Although at the time, you know, when real estate was going up, you could sell things very quickly and move out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I finally just said, wrong career, wrong spouse, wrong investments. I'm not listening to my intuition. So I, I decided to say, what if I made every decision in my life based upon my intuition rather than allowing myself to listen to the authorities out there that tell me what I should do? What would happen to my life? And what could go so wrong? Because everything, as far as I was concerned, I ended up divorced, you know, um, and all of these major problems, being in the wrong career after the real estate crash and watching my income go down, 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 down. I said, what do I have to lose? So kind of like if you were um, a fan of the Seinfeld television show, like I was, and when George decided to do the opposite, George Costanza, and yes. suddenly... Everything was better in his life, you know. He wasn't going to have tuna salad on toast. He was going to have chicken salad on rye. And, you know, so I decided to do that. And that's what made me start Powered by Intuition in January of 2010. Because before that, oh, I even had the wrong website. I was just, just because I am trained in financial planning, I was um, trying to be like Susie Ormond online and help people. And it, it wasn't satisfying my soul. And I thought I should do it because I could. And that was my background, but not because I wanted to. So yeah. that's what led to Powered by Intuition. And it's been an amazing journey ever since. <laughs> wow. And that is so true. There's so many women entrepreneurs and women who are in the workforce still. And they're, they're just not being replenished. They're not being fulfilled. And they, they have this hole almost that's inside of them because they're not following what they know intuitively is the right decision for them, even if all of the logical things tell them otherwise or if society tells them otherwise. Exactly. Wow. And so you're taking the step. You're on the frontier of leading so many women out of situations that have been frustrating to them and sometimes very unhealthy for them. So can you, you were the financial sales professional before in, in your previous career, and it was an easy career. How, how exactly did you transition from, from being that financial sales professional into the money mindset healer? How does that work for intuitive purposes? Well, uh, once I started to get in touch with my own intuition, because ironically enough, I have been um, an intuitive in offering readings to people. Mm -hmm. First, it was with the tarot since I was 11, with astrology since I was 12, 
And then when I finally understood what was happening to me, mediumship readings, but I wasn't listening for myself. Once I started listening, back in 2006, I came across a fascinating article about emotional freedom technique. And I realized, of course, I was always drawn to healing and, you know, hands-on healing, and I had taken some courses on that, but I became absolutely fascinated with EFT or tapping. And I'm not sure, I hope, I'm sure many, many people in your audience know what tapping is, but it's tapping on the meridian points where an acupuncturist would insert needles to release a blockage of chi or life force energy that is the causation of any illness or emotional problem that you're experiencing in your life. And with tapping or emotional freedom te technique or EFT, we, do, we just tap on those points. We don't use needles. So when I learned about this amazing technique and I started researching it, because I'm a big researcher, I started reading a lot of findings, uh, some anecdotal and some studies, about how it was an amazing, amazing modality for calming the amygdala in the brain and stopping that inner critical voice that causes you to self-sabotage. And so I started studying it, and it's now been 10 years. I'm a certified emotional freedom technique practitioner, but I started using it on myself, of course. We always do that at first, right? Yes. Because... You know, as I saw my income going down, 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 and especially after 2008 when suddenly, you know, the financial sales industry was completely decimated and yes. um, hauntingly quiet, um, I was having panic attacks. I would sit up straight in the middle of the night in bed from a sound sleep with my heart pounding out of my chest and my stomach in knots with fear about, oh my God. What's going to happen to me? How am I going to pay the mortgage on this big, big, big house I don't really need now? You know, and all of these horrible things. So I started tapping, and it started working. And so I slowly started helping other people with it. And so when I decided to leave my job finally at the end of August in 2014, I had been using it. I had been applying it. I had been working with people. And that's what actually allowed me to transition into becoming an entrepreneur and a money mindset healer was using emotional freedom technique to first restore calm in people who were experiencing anxiety like the way I had been, mostly over money concerns. Now I call them sales and money blocks, but because you cannot deal with any problems until you stop that racing mind and you return to calmness so that you can start to deal with it. So that was, it was a process. It took time. I was my first client, but that's how I became a money mindset healer. Wow. So EFT is so incredibly powerful. It is. It's an amazing tool. And it is simple. And sometimes it's deceptively simple. You know, when you work with someone, uh, they sometimes have such a shift that it appears to be so natural, it's so subtle, that they don't acknowledge that it was the EFT. It seems that they have always been that way, and they suddenly forget how they actually had been reacting previously, sometimes for decades or most of their life. So it's an amazing tool. I, I love using it, and I, I love having people use it. And when they use it and they learn it and they can apply it themselves, that's the beauty of it. It's like you're teaching them to fish, right? Yes, exactly. You're definitely teaching them to fish. And, you know, when you work with the EFT and when you work with the, the money mindset, you actually work with your inner game, as we call it. Can you explain a little bit on how does the inner game really affect entrepreneurs' earning power? It is huge. It does not matter. And I, have, I, I learned this myself, especially at being a sales manager of other salespeople, that even if you give them word-for-word -word sales scripts inside, their inner fears and insecurities and discomfort and anxiety 
around selling will cause them to sabotage their results. And even if they're reading a script, they will say something, they will blurt something out that will cause the sale to go south. If they, even if they have no intentions of saying that, they cannot help themselves. And as far as an entrepreneur goes, where you know most of the time we are in a conversation, we're not using a script. We're selling from you know a, a, a place of service and from the heart. What will happen is you will sabotage. Um, you will not follow up. You will uh, perhaps say something. Um, to a person that causes them to wonder whether this is the right program. You know, it will come out subconsciously, but you'll say it. Um, you may also have, if someone voices any type of objection whatsoever, instead of using what you may have been taught to go deeper, to understand that in many, many cases, people use objections as excuses, to yes. slow down the sale. Many times it's not that they don't want to say yes, but they don't want to say yes too quickly. They yes. want time to process. They mm -hmm. want time to feel comfortable about if, 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 you know, expending the money, the investment. And so they use objections to slow down this transaction. Mm -hmm. And if you are not comfortable, if you have not dealt with that inner anxiety that comes up around the conversation and the different nuances and things that happen, you will immediately shut down. You will feel afraid. You will feel like you're coming across pushy and salesy and um, you will not ask any more questions. You'll say, okay. And you won't go deeper. And that's not usually what objections are about. Wow. And that's what I teach, but you have to deal with the inner game first. You have to be comfortable. And a lot of times what happens with entrepreneurs is there's a little voice mm -hmm. that is telling them, what if they don't get the transformation they promised? Oh. What if I overpromised? Mm -hmm. And then they're mad at me. Or they feel that I have taken them on a, you know, on a on a ride, you know, and um, they paid me, and I don't deliver, and then they think I'm a I'm a fraud, or perhaps all I cared about was their money, where in most cases, most entrepreneurs that we know in our world, they care very little about money, which is part of the problem. They care so much about the person transforming. Mm -hmm. But regardless, that voice will tell you that. And if the person has any, anything they say, you'll, you'll almost be glad that they said no. Because <laughs> then you don't have to experience that anxiety and that fear of what if I can't deliver on my promise. So we must, must, must deal with the inner game first. Because even like I said, if you are given word for word what to say to somebody. Your inner problems, which are deeply embedded, will come through either unconsciously to how you react and behave or to through the words you say that you're going to blurt out. Mm -hmm. And you will not be able to stop yourself. Wow. <clears throat> Human behavior. That, that is a lot of human behavior. And it sounds like you're really, really passionate and committed to teaching entrepreneurs on how to really love the sales process and really how to start creating more wealth in their life through the sales process. I am so committed to that, Lucy, because when I went into this business, you know, I had been exploring it since 2010 when I started Powered by Intuition, but very gingerly dipping my toe in because you know, I was making money. I didn't have to make this my focus. But when I decided to get serious and I started thinking about it in late 2013, I gave myself a date. Mm. Well, I, as you can imagine, I had the same doubts because it's different being in business for yourself. If you are selling a product or service of some huge conglomerate or any other company you work for, you know, rejection bounces off of you very differently than when somebody rejects you 
because your products and services are you. And it really hurts. So I'm very passionate because the problem is that most entrepreneurs get on the phone with a prospect in a strategy or discovery session and they wing it. And the truth is, because I worked in this business with people who made their living, you know, offering a service or a product, you have to practice. Yes. You cannot wing it. It is just like when you become, let's say, a Reiki practitioner. Do you wing it? No, you got you took a course. Mm -hmm. Or you go to a doctor and you're going to have a surgery. You don't want your doctor winging it and operating on you. No, that's true. Right. So it's the same thing. The best salespeople practice. Mm -hmm. And they follow a model, a proven model, and they keep using it until they get better. They become fully aware and conscious while in the process. And I'm very passionate because it, it, isn't, it isn't brain surgery. It really, really isn't. But yet, everybody's so afraid of it. But the way that I share my process and teach it and all my tips after, you know, those many decades of actually selling, you can become comfortable. And there are some things that I show people that just using that, they all of a sudden feel empowered and they don't have that fear or that fraud factor where they feel afraid to offer their programs and services. They're afraid to declare their expertise and own it. They overcome that like that. And then they actually start monetizing their passion, their purpose. And they live up to their full potential because the truth is until you have clients you cannot live up to your full potential. You might be a great Reiki practitioner, but if you don't help anybody with it, it it's sort of useless. So, yes, I'm darn tootin' passionate about it, you know. Mm, that's fabulous. Can you tell us some of the top blocks that these entrepreneurs normally have? I mean, we, we've talked about the sales block, and we've talked about the inner game. But what, what are some of the top blocks that, that they have, and what kind of tips do you have to help the entrepreneurs that have these blocks? Sure. Well, we just, I just mentioned one, the fraud syndrome. Yes. You know, where syndrome. you feel like they're going to think I'm a fraud. Mm -hmm. That is a huge, huge block. And that comes up in the sales process enormously. And um, one of the ways that we deal with that is we have to get really, really clear. And an entrepreneur, I mean, you should. this is basic foundational business 101, mm -hmm. but you must be very, very clear in what you do, who you help, how you help them, and what your system is. And that's basic foundational marketing. But we have to do it, even in sales. You have to be so clear. What is the transformation that you provide? What is that one amazing goal that people are frantically want to reach that you, with your assistance, can bring them to? That one huge change in their life. And you, got, you have got to be clear on the benefits that doing this offers. How does their life change? And honestly, what I tell people is, go back and read the testimonials you got from people. Because a lot of times, the, it's the fraud factor. It's the, um, the other symptom is being afraid that they will not get the transformation you promised. That you'll go through this whole, pro whole process and they'll go, no, nope, I didn't get anything. No, nope, nothing. You know, and you're going to feel like, oh, my God, you know. Um, that is huge, and it's so common. And, you know, it's even common, I think, in many of the people that we may look up to as our mentors who are, you know, maybe the multi-million dollar gurus. You know, let's say they have a one-on-one -on -one client who paid them $100,000 to work with them. Mm -hmm. I think they probably have a little bit of that in their gut, too. So, you know, it's normal. It's human. 
But one of the things that you can do is go back and read the testimonials that you got from previous clients mm -hmm. and say, logically, how many people have ever said to me, nope, I got nothing. And, and you're probably going to say, I never heard that before. So why am I thinking that? You know, but we can't help it. It's in the reptilian brain. So that's that's another huge block. But go back and read your own testimonials and just rationalize about it. And um, the other block is that people do not want to be perceived as pushy salespeople. Yes. And that's why they uh, absolutely resist learning how to have a really deep, meaningful, one-on-one -on -one conversation that inspires the person you're talking to to want to work with you. They don't realize that they don't have to be pushy. They might have, sorry, um, they might have realized, they might have seen other people selling or they might have been put in situations where they were being sold to. Perhaps if they bought a high ticket item themselves, like an appliance or a car, and they immediately, their mind goes back to that experience. But truly, truly, really great salespeople are not pushy. They are not salesy because what we do is we inspire the person to want to say yes to the opportunity before them. And then basically what happens is they end up saying to you, uh, what's the next step? How can I work with you? They don't, you don't sell to them, you pull them toward the opportunity mm -hmm. of change and growth in whatever your niche is. And um, that's one of the things that's a huge, huge um, wall that people put up around them and they don't uh, aspire to learn how to become great at inspiring others to want to say yes to your offer. And we call that sales. And one of the things that we talk about is, yeah, the word sale, it might be a four letter word. We might be afraid of it, but we have to get over it. <laughs> it's time to get over it. It's actually yes. a good thing because yes. if you do something that heals people, that stops their pain and suffering, and I'm not just talking about physical healing, but let's say I teach you how to sell, and you become excited about having conversations with people. It becomes fun. Mm -hmm. You get more people into your programs, and you help more people. You're actually sending out waves of goodness into the world because you're helping people. Sales exactly. is an opportunity to offer a solution to somebody and solve a problem. And there's nothing different between that and a doctor prescribing something for you. That's good. It's not about the money. And that's what I think people get hung up on. Like, but they'll think I'm just about the money. Well, no. Do you go to a doctor and argue? I'm not, I'm not going to pay that. I want it for free. You do not. Why do we shortchange ourselves? And it doesn't mean, I don't believe in ever gouging people. Mm -hmm. You must charge something that is fair market value for what you do and feel good about it. And you cannot charge people more than you think you're worth. If you think your first day out of the gate you're going to charge $5,000 for a 90-day program, that is not going to happen. People are going to perceive you as pushy and salesy because inside there is a disconnect between that dollar amount and what you feel you deserve. And I'm not saying that's the right amount for people or not. I'm not giving you, I'm, it could be a thousand dollars. If you do not feel inside that, that that is something that you feel confident and comfortable and worthy of, you know, asking you're not going to get it. So we've got to work on your deserving and your worth. And that's what we do with tapping. But um, the major blocks are feeling like a fraud, the uh, afraid of coming across as pushy and salesy and or greedy. 
and because we're taught not to do that. And um, oh, my mind just went blank. What else? What did I just say? <laughs> what did I just say? Um, the three top ones: feeling like a fraud, um, feeling being pushy and salesy. Oh, and being <laughs> I'm sorry, and um, having the fear that your client will not get the transformation you promise. And all wow. those things can be healed with tapping and with a certain exercises that we have to do that are foundational so that you realize you're not like that and that you offer true value. Wow. Well, speaking about offering true value, you actually have um, a free gift for our audience. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I have a book. It's a short book. It's an e-book. And it is called Less Worry, More Clients, More Money. And wow. it covers what we just talked about in depth about the blockages that are coming up for people, the blockages of limiting beliefs mm -hmm. and negative emotions and uh, fears around things that happen in our lives. And those translate into limiting beliefs where you are afraid your client will not get the transformation that you provide. Or a negative emotions is that you might come across as pushy and salesy and then they'll reject you. Those, those bring up a lot of fear. And then a memory around something happening where you know you might have had something happen where somebody said well, you're, you're very aggressive or you're pushy and then that holds you back from really offering your programs and feeling confident about the transformation and declaring your worth because you have those that sort of you know that fear stuck in your mind that people think I'm aggressive People think I'm pushy or, you know, whatever. I'm making that up. But right. so we go into that so that you, when you read this book and the descriptions, you can immediately say, oh, that's why I have that belief. Oh, that's why I'm stuck here. So it's very eye-opening, and it's a free download. Right. And they can get that at your website under poweredbyintuition.com slash less worry more clients yes and I can make it even easier if they just go to poweredbyintuition.com it's the very top of the page on the home page so they'll, okay. they'll, they won't be able to miss it that's fabulous Angela this has been such a phenomenal interview oh. and we just have a few more seconds left could you is there any tips, any takeaways that you wanted to give our audience before we say, we say our farewells? Yes, I want to go back to what I started to mention about people and objections. Mm -hmm. Don't give up too soon if anyone has an objection. I can't afford it, I want to think about it, I need to speak with my spouse. Because as I said, many times they are just excuses to put the brakes on and allow themselves to process. Mm -hmm. And what we would actually say that a lot of times, the more questions a person asks, the more they come up with what you would term excuses, they're actually buying signals. So don't be put off by it. Explore further. Wow. Wow, that is a huge tip. So uh, some of the objections can actually be beside, buy-in signals. Yes but they just need a little bit more time to process so that as you're going through the sales, as you're facilitating the sales, it's allowing that person to really move through it at their pace, not at your pace. Yes. They may not be ready to say yes, but they want to. Yes. You, wow. When you learn to read between the lines, this, it's, and again, it's not brain surgery. Mm -hmm. It can be taught. Great salespeople are made, not born. That's a lot so of people true. think if you have the gift of gab, you're a great salesperson. No, no, no. I, I know some wonderful people who they have the gift of gab, but they, they, couldn't, they couldn't sell anything. Their way out of a paper bag? No. no. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, but 
That is really good tips. Angela, I'm so grateful you've been on the Wealthy Wednesday show. Thank you for being a phenomenal guest. Oh. And I'm so grateful for these tips. I, I personally will enact what you said today. And I love the EFT. So I appreciate you bringing more awareness of this phenomenal technique into the world, along with how to use it for sales techniques. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being here. And as, it, as I said before, an honor. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I want to thank my audience. You are the reason why I am putting together the Wealthy Wednesday show every single week. And I would love it if you would go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Wealthy Wednesday show. Like that page and let us know what did you think about this interview? What were your takeaways and what other topics or featured guests you would like me to have on the Wealthy Wednesday? And I will personally respond to your comments. So until next time, abundant blessings. Thanks for listening to the Wealthy Wednesday Show with Lucy McMonagle. That's on every Wednesday. Join us next time for more inspiration and empowerment from various topics and expert guests. To personally contact Lucy McMonagle, visit L-U-C-I-M-C-M-O-N-A-G-L-E.com. That's LucyMcMonagle.com. Until next time, many blessings.